chapter one. Peshawar to Chitral. Home free. Kipling is dripping with humidity. It's pre monsoon. Peshawar. Major crossroads of the Silk Road. Overcast morning. 1967. Yeah, when almost by accident, Kipling branches off from the main trunk line of the Hashish Trail from Istanbul to go and Kathmandu and heads north, far north, and to the remote, almost inaccessible Himalayan region, Chitral. Peshawar. World Headquarters of the Bataan Tribe. And uh, this journey will transform this young 17-year-old uh, British hippie Kipling into a counter-cultural legend. Yeah, the air heavy, laden with moisture as the young Kipling saunters toward the uh, British Council Library just show his passport and he gets to read the London newspapers uh, down Arbob Road and uh, through the alleyways. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, almost by accident, he notices uh, in a, a cobweb poster uh, in Pakistani airline office, daily flights to Chitral. You mean you can fly into Chitral? Into the heart of the northwest frontier of Pakistan? Wild tribal area up there? Well, what is Chitral like? Well, you got to imagine that before 1947, before Pakistan got born after India became free and the most of the Muslims went over to that area, called it Pakistan. They also had East Pakistan before it was became Bangladesh. Uh, this was a huge, it was all India. One big uh, subcontinent called India, ruled by the British Raj. So Peshawar was in India. There was no Pakistan before 1947 when I was born in the Haight-Ashbury. God bless my 17-year-old wild teenage mother <laughs> birthed me in the hate ashbury yeah so what had happened was uh think of the india all of it as a big gothic house and in this house was like an attic a turret that had been sealed off for 350 years frozen in time all the train quaint tribal customs, uh, they rolled themselves absolutely 100% free. And the reason they stayed free was Chitral. <sighs> what a hassle to get into, either by air or by land, by road, uh, it was a similar situation in Tibet. That's how Tibetan Buddhism uh, stayed frozen in time. Uh, nobody could get in there. I mean, the whole Tibetan plateau, 11,000 feet. Even the yaks can't hack that altitude. Well, land access? Well, there is a jeepable road. <laughs> kind of. It's 370 kilometers from Peshawar into Chitral town, but it's snowed in most of the time. You got a window between June, June, July, August, maybe the road is cleared of snow. I didn't know you could go up into Chitral by plane, huh? Yeah, he's looking at that poster, huh, Kipling? Innocently, as he curiously walks into the office, might as well check it out. Sure enough, there is one scheduled flight daily, theoretically, 
Uh, but there's only the one plane. It's got a single, like, wooden propeller. Seats 12 people. Most of it is for cargo. They can get some mail and, and some food up in there. Uh, they'll throw a few people in on the side. Make some pocket money. But this 12-seater uh, spec of a plane is so tiny. And the Himalayas around here. <laughs> So huge, massive, that even a hint of turbulent weather, cancel a flight, otherwise everybody goes down, yeah. Imagine having to fly lower than the massive snow-covered mountains around you to get in there, the flight path. And the Pataan pilot... He's, he's a native. Uh, he just, he's got an old National Geographic typological uh, map that he uses. Yeah, pretty colors, three-dimensional typological map. And uh, he knows the area because he grew up here. He used to hunt ebex and mohair goats, snow leopards with his father and his uncle around here. So he flies visually, you know, using the map as a rough guide. Well, that's why straight tourists shun this mirage-like so-called flight to Chitral because uh, they wait all morning. Go out to the airport in Peshawar and, hmm, ah, the weather invariably packs up. That's just the microclimate around here. So they got to retreat down to uh, Peshawar's last British colonial style hotel, you know, with barefoot servants uh, and uh, drop out of sight behind a hefty Rudyard Kipling novel and whisper, I told you we should have put all our chips on the Taj Mahal. It's flat around there. You can just, you know, get off the train, take a rickshaw, and, you know, get those, uh, get those glory uh, photos. Good on the ego, huh? Reflecting pools? <laughs> yeah.